Well, hello everyone. My name is Ted Gardner and I'm an interviewer for the uh, Library of Congress uh, Oral History Project, uh, World War II Veterans. And uh, we have the honor and joy today of uh, uh, Oliver James Spriggs of Cincinnati uh, to interview. And uh, our video camera operator is Dennis Daly. And uh, we're here at the uh, hospitality of the Public Library of Cincinnati in Hamilton County. Um, I'm going to call you Jim. That's good. And Jim, uh, as you realize, you're, you'll be getting a DVD of this and your family and friends will be able to see it. And, uh, and it's very important that we yeah. get, get your story because everyone has a story to tell. And uh, uh, where were you born, Jim? Uh, York, Kentucky in Greenham County, Kentucky. I'll be darned. And I, and I have a little uh, uh, touch the thing with, with Abe Lincoln because I was born in a log house. You were born, <laughs> you and Abe. Me and Abe. You and Father yes. Abraham. How yeah. about that? Well, that's uh, that's very interesting. When were you born? Uh, March the 14th, 1925. 1925. Golly. Well, those days were something else. Where did you go to school, Jim? Well, uh, this I went to school at a one-room schoolhouse and it was Kenton Furnace School. That was a, a, an iron bar furnace there, and that was a, and it was called Kenton Furnace. Oh, I see. I and see. Uh, I only finished the eighth grade because at the end of uh, my, my finishing eighth grade, uh, there was no bus service. Right. And uh, I had to, uh, I would have to go uh, live somewhere mm -hmm. and the money was short and it was, that was out of the question. So then uh, two years later why the, uh, they had bus service and my sister had graduated from the eighth grade and so she went to high school and I never went to high school. I see. Now, um, is this in coal country? No. No? No, it's, uh, it's w west of that. West of the coal country. Yeah. Okay. It's probably another uh, 40 miles, 50 miles up there in the coal. See. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, then, uh, when, you, uh, when you had to uh, finish your school experience there, what, uh, uh, were you living on a farm or did yes, your parents I, were farmers? Or? Right. We had, a, uh, actually, the first part of my life, I was, uh, after I was born, shortly after I was born, my father and Mother moved to Denver, Colorado. So, and I was in Denver, Colorado, in and around Denver, Colorado, oh. for until I was six years old. Uh -huh. And then, of course, the Great Depression came, and uh, we came back. Right. And I was the oldest of four children, and right. it was quite a project for come uh, come across the whole country for with a 1924 model <laughs> Dodge touring car with a trailer behind it. How about that? So we what an experience. Yes, that was. That was quite an experience. And every little bit we were blowing a tire or something. Sure. And I think the worst one we had was in Indianapolis and Indianapolis had cobblestone streets. Uh -huh. And of course when it blew one tire, well, it started rolling sideways and <laughs> then we blew the other tire. So that was Oh my goodness. I think sake. that's the worst accident we had, but we finally made it. And those tires with the, with the inner tube, you know, right, all, and oh very poor. I remember up. that so yeah. well. I yeah. should say. Yeah. Well, then you came back to uh, to the furnace. Yeah. And uh, work on the farm, did you? Or? Uh, yes, I I did. I we had a we had a actually a 259 acres that, but it was only about uh, something like uh, 18 acres that was tillable, and mm -hmm. the rest of it was hillsides. And uh, so we, we managed to, to uh, su uh, survive because uh, we had uh, a lot of timber and we'd uh, ch a few railroad ties and sell them at Portsmouth, oh. Ohio, see. Wow. And that uh, you, you go around and see the old railroad ties now and they want $15, $18 for them and we was getting 52 and a half cents delivered. <laughs> Just imagine. 
Oh my goodness, and that was hard work too. Oh yes. Hewing yeah. those things out, what did, what Use were they? Use a broad axe, I don't know whether you know a broad axe. Sure I do, you bet I do. <laughs> okay. You bet. Well that's it, that, that's, uh, that's very interesting. Well then, uh, <clears throat> time went on of course, and uh, um, uh, along came December the 7th, 1941. Where were you then? Well, I was still on the farm, and uh, I can tell you where I was at and what I was doing. Uh, we we had uh, uh, an old Atwater Kent radio, and for mm -hmm. some reason we the batteries was bad. It was a battery radio or something. We didn't have the radio on, and so we were walking. My dad and I were walking to uh, about two miles up the road to my where my uncle lived, and and he met us in a car, and he says. Uh, the wars, I don't remember the exact words he said, but anyway, he said that the, uh, the Jap Japanese had, had bombed Pearl Harbor. Well, that was the first I knew about it, and that was about uh, somewhere about 2 o'clock in the afternoon yes. of the December the 7th. Right, seven. right. Yeah. Well, that, uh, that's a memorable time for so many people of our, of our era, you know, and we always yeah. remember where we were yeah. on that particular day. and. Uh, and the reaction, of course, of the nation was sure. was uh, amazing. And uh, <clears throat> um, when now let's see, in 1941, you were born in 25, so you were 16 years old then, right? Uh, yeah, 16. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, actually, uh, they was uh, trying to get people uh, that skilled people. And I had a better than average uh, mechanical ability and as a kid. And uh, so they wanted two and dime makers. So I went to uh, Ashland, Kentucky, mm -hmm. they, and they provided a bus for us. And I worked a uh, better part of a year uh, learning to be a two and dime maker. Well, it, I didn't like what was happening, I quit. And then I, later on, I went to Cleveland, Ohio and worked in a foundry up there oh. until I was 18. Uh -huh. I was 17 when I went to the foundry. So. Right. <laughs> Boy, you were young and working in, uh, yeah. in a very, very uh, trying uh, kind of a, yeah. an operation. So um, uh, you waited until your 18th birthday to check out the service, or what was the deal? Well, uh, when I become 18, I, I got myself a, a, a discharge book for Lake, Lake Maritime, but I never used it. And meantime, I had to register for the draft, and uh, so uh, I just kept on working in this foundry. And uh, so I decided, well, I've had enough of this, and I'll go back home. So I did, I went back home, and I hadn't been home a week, and I got my greetings. And <laughs> <laughs> so. How did you travel in those days? By train or a train or, uh, or bus or bus, whatever you know, but anything sure. and a lot of walking too. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Uh, well, that. Uh, so, how did your family uh, react to your your being drafted? And well, uh, they were actually. I don't think they was too concerned. Uh, actually, I'll tell you. I'll back up a little bit. Okay. I. I um, when I was 17, I enlisted in the Navy, and my, my dad, I enlisted for six years. Mm -hmm. Me and another fellow, a neighbor boy, and so his, his father signed his papers, and my dad wouldn't sign mine because we enlisted for six years. Mm -hmm. Well, I was pretty well put out because of the fact he wouldn't sign my papers, you know, and the other guy went. But uh, really and truly, after i been involved in a couple of skirmishes and like in Europe and different other places, I, I realized he probably did me a favor. <laughs> but, uh, you know, because there was a lot of things that happened along in that time. And oh, I should say. Yes, yes I should say. And the, yeah, those, um, uh, the army in Europe uh, had, had really, 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 really hard, hard, uh, yeah. hard service. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, here he came and uh, you got back into the Navy. Yeah. And where did they send you? Actually, I went to Great Lakes for uh, training. Did my tr training and then I went to Norfolk, Virginia and we was waiting on a draft to go wherever. And, uh, uh, 
In fact, it was trying to entice people into the submarine service, and they had an old 1918 model sub that had been refurbished mm -hmm. half a dozen times, I guess. And they wanted to take us out on a cruise on a sub. Well, two of us uh, volunteered, really, to go on that sub. So we go out, and it's in January. <laughs> and we're on it, we're all of this, you know, this porpoising, and the, <laughs> so, they decided to do a 50-foot dive. Well, a 50-foot dive, you're still in the, where you do the, un, the water undulates like that. Mm -hmm. And that thing cracked and popped and creamed and groaned. Oh, wow. And I thought, boy, if you want me to be in the submarine service, I think you've done <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't be in the submarine service. <laughs> Not for you. Yeah. Oh, I can understand that. Yeah, yeah. that, and it was a World War One submarine. That, yeah, that they yeah, had or somewhere in that area, something like that. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. my goodness, and they were, they called them pig boats, you know, right. and they were really, yeah, they were that that was rough duty. Yeah. Well, uh, so you came back, and uh, uh, where did they send you to fire control school? Uh, what uh, uh, I was a fire, uh, uh, actually, the, uh, I was a fireman first class. Fireman first class. I'm in other sorry. words, I, yeah, sorry. I was in the engineering section. See? Right, exactly. Well, anyway, uh, we finally went to uh, Boston, Massachusetts uh, on a draft, went up to Ar Fargo Barracks, which up in Boston, and then they, February the 14th, or the, yeah, February the 4th, uh, 8th of 1944, they brought the Laffey down from Bath, Maine, and we commissioned it. Oh. Uh, and uh, they had about that mice, much ice on the deck. Good gravy. It, it, it was cold, you know. Oh, man, I bet yeah. it was cold. And we stood quarters, very short, short ceremony. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> and then we, once we did that, went aboard, and eight days later on my dad's birthday, I stepped, uh, we was in dry dock, of course, they have to refurbish a lot of mm -hmm. things, you know how they do, new, sure. new, new boats. And uh, I stepped on a hose or something on the deck, popped my ankle over and broke half of it off. <gasps> oh, good. Yeah. So when the ship went on the shakedown cruise, I was laying up there in Charleston Naval Hospital. Oh. And then when it came back, I went back aboard the Laffey. Uh -huh. and, uh, and then shortly thereafter, uh, we uh, went to Br Brooklyn Navy Yard. And Brooklyn Navy Yard, we picked up, uh, uh, there were 13 destroyers, and there were 13 cargo ships. Each, each ship had its own convoy, right. you know, the, 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 uh, destroyer. So anyway, we went to England. And when we got to England, why? We, we knew what was coming off because all those fjords up and around uh, Nunnerdare, Ireland, and Gretting, Scotland was clear packed full of ships. See? Sure. And uh, so a lot of people, including myself, was uh, going to church and everything we knew was coming on. See, So then the next thing that happened why on the 4th of June, why we, uh, they had uh, 36 LCBPs. Uh, and had uh, each one of them had a squad in them. That's 50 people, 50 soldiers. Now the LCVP was uh, landing craft vehicle person personnel. Vehicle personnel. Yeah. And how how big a craft was that? I think it was. Uh, if I remember right, 38 foot sounds in my mind. You know that uh -huh. it's all it's open. And yeah. Flat and open. So right. Had a drop gate in the front. Right. You know. Right. And so, so you, could, you could carry uh, what jeeps or jeeps, uh, equipment, or mm -hmm. you know, anything, and, and personnel and yeah, all. Yeah, remarkable kind of a yeah. piece of equipment. So then uh, we picked these 36 LCBPs up, and <coughs> we went out in the channel, and the channel kicked up. I mean, it really got rough. I would guess that they was running anything from 15 to 20 foot swells. Wow, and oh that, boy. The, now those people who was in that uh, LC, LCVP uh, was in there from the afternoon of the fourth to all night the fourth, all day the fifth to the morning of the sixth. Ooh. Now, and they, I know they was t 
totally sick. Oh, you know? everybody must yeah. have been sick. And uh, so, anyway, we got to, when we got to Normandy, uh, we only had 35. Uh -huh. So somewhere, in the radio silence, somewhere we lost one, and we don't know where, you know. Right. And, of course, they were trying to get in, and they was hanging up on those obstacles, and, and they, of course, they was, some of them was quite a ways out, and they couldn't get off or couldn't mm -hmm. get in. And they dropped the gate, and they just out, and they swam, and they walked, and, and uh, got to the beach, and then they couldn't go anywhere after that. And right. I got a chance to see that, and uh, I, I was, my general quarter station was in the uh, uh, after fire room mm -hmm. on the border, and I got a chance to go up on top side to see what was going on. Oh, you did? And so wow, that must any, have been a show. Oh, it was. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I tell people that I was kind of a giddy hillbilly kid that uh, in, in that half an hour or so that I was topside, I changed to be a man mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of the very uh, thing I saw. Oh, you know. yeah. Very sobering experience. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then you, you witnessed. Uh, yeah. You witnessed men going ashore? And, oh, uh, yes, yeah. And, and they would, uh, then when they was trying to get a group there, actually they, they people was in those LCBPs yeah. were so sick, I'm sure, they walked across that. And they was falling, they was falling. Oh, falling, my falling. goodness, my yeah. goodness sake. And so then uh, later on, uh, we went parallel to the beach Mm -hmm. And we're firing into those bunkers to try to get some, get them some relief, and they finally did get across there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we was there for uh, uh, I don't remember how many days, but uh, uh, during the time we was there, why we shot down a British Spitfire. <laughs> oh goodness <laughs> sakes! <laughs> Poor recognition, huh? Well, no, it was, what it was, uh, out, I don't know whether you realize or not, but where we were at, we were out up towards the Arctic Circle, see, mm -hmm. and it didn't get dark until 10, 30, 11 o'clock. It right. really get dark. Right. Short nights. Yeah. And so, anyway, uh, there's fit guards out there, and this fellow was sitting, we'd all sitting in gun mounts and everything. We didn't leave a general quarter station. Sure. Well, the... Uh, this Spitfire uh, dived down in the ships, Ooh. and there was a fellow on, a, on our ship that had and had quad forties, and you know mm -hmm. what a quad forty was, and he was setting up in the in the mount, and other people was loaded and passers. They was kind of sacked out on the around the tub there, see? Mm -hmm. and uh, so he looked up and saw the, this plane coming in, which looked ideal almost like a metro yeah you know? and he whirled that around and had 60 rounds in it Literally. and had had 15 in each right. barrel sure and shot that spit bar down oh my golly now they had a big hack about the british government for about shooting that plane down but uh, they gave him a general or a, 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 a what do you call them the not a general discharge a, Marshal, of uh, court martial. Court martial. Yeah. Wow. And uh, and Poor really, guy. just to satisfy the British government, for one day, then rescinded it, and gave him a pack carton of cigarettes and sent him back to the states. Oh, <laughs> oh boy! So wartime did some yeah funny things. Yeah. I should say. Well, now uh, you know you're describing about. <clears throat> Uh, on your 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 uh, armament on, on that ship, uh, quad four means means four barrels four barrels mm -hmm. of forty millimeter mm -hmm. each, uh -huh. and boy they could put up a lot of lead. Oh yeah, they? they did. They put a lot of. Oh, we had do we had one one port and starboard had two of them up there on it. Yeah. Oh one deck, which is a man. Deck. When and they when you let go of that stuff, that was that was yeah. really deadly. Right. But well, now, uh, up there, around those fjords and everything, that, that was pretty interesting for you, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Uh, 
Of course, there's a lot of time up there when we were only there about three days or two or three days, uh -huh. and it was foggy most of the time. Oh, that's but uh, we, but gee, you could see all those daggone uh, ships back in there. Oh, God. They packed packed it back in there. Yeah, there was five thousand ships on that one, and everything. Over there. Isn't that so? The whole horizon was covered with ships. Yeah. Now, uh, as you moved uh, toward the uh, toward the Normandy beaches. Uh, <clears throat> under what kind of a command were you? Did, uh, uh, well, there was, uh, in our squadron, there was six destroyers, five destroyers. Uh -huh. And I don't know how the chain of command was. I really don't know how that worked there. Probably had an admiral. Well, yeah, I'm sure it was an admiral. Rear admiral you know, at uh -huh. least, yeah. yeah, but I don't, I don't yeah. know. Or I mean, it could have been somebody on the beach, too. Could have been, yeah. 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 Did you see, that? that's an interesting statement you made there, uh, speaking about the beach. Did you ever see the beach masters, the, the men who stood there directing traffic? No, I, I, if, I if I did, I didn't know what it yeah. was about. See. Yeah, that. that we, 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 we'd uh, go along and, and go parallel to the beach, and parallel to the beach, back and forth, for and fire right into these bunkers, and of wow. course it kind of, uh, it didn't get them all, but it got them down so that they could get across the beach. Sure. Uh, in, in, with the, that thing in mind about those landings, I'm going to tell you a little story. There's a man that lives in uh, uh, Madeira up here. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never talked to the man, but my a fellow I work with talked to him. And he was in one of the, of the LCBPs when he oh, hit up there. And he really? was, and he, they got hung up on that, and they dropped the gate, and, and it was just right there, and the Germans was firing right into that, and they just slaughtering him. And, all. and he was in communications, and he had a roll of wire around his neck. Yes. That's what he was supposed to take ashore, and his rifle, of course. <laughs> and he was a short fellow, so he uh, said, I can't stay here. So he just stepped off that gate, and of course he was, he was about Two, two foot short of what? In the was. depth of the water. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that thing took him right down. Right down at the bottom. And he still had a roll of water when he got back where he could breathe, but he didn't have his rifle. Oh, my God. <laughs> he goodness. lost his rifle. Oh. Yeah. I've never talked to the man. I wanted to, I wanted to talk to him. And I yeah, never yeah. We ought to try and get a hold of him. He, he'd, he'd be an interesting interview, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, so you were back and forth there, uh, say, two or three days? Well, uh, actually, we was there on uh, about 10 or 11 days. Oh, 10 or 11 days? Yeah, all together, yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. And also, there's, in World War II, whenever that Normandy invasion, there was only two ships sunk in the, on the day of that, of all the ships there. One of them was on a, a DE, and then the other one was a minesweeper. How about that? And the Osprey, which was a minesweeper, was right next to where we were at, and we picked up the crew. I oh. think there was, I think there was um, uh, 29 or 27 or mm -hmm. you know something like that. Mm -hmm. And of course, the ship was full of capacity. We didn't have room for them. They were sleeping on decks and everywhere. Sure. And the and they all filled in here and there. So we made a big fast run back to England and got ammunition and oil and dropped the dropped them over there. And then went back to. Yeah. yeah, and those poor guys have been in oily water and everything. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. terrible, terrible. Yeah, goodness sakes. Well, you, you have, you saw so much, Jim. That it's just amazing. Yeah. Um, now at that time, uh, was, was your ship hit? Was the Lafayette hit? No, it wasn't. No. Uh, then after we pulled back out of the uh, Normandy invasion, we were uh, in. Uh, either Plymouth or Weymouth, England, we mm -hmm. was in both places, I don't remember which one was in. And then they was having trouble taking the hot deep water part, uh, port at Cherbourg. Uh, the army was pretty well tied down. So uh, they made up an ar armada, if you will, uh, a battleship, I think, maybe one battleship, took a couple of cruisers and six destroyers, and we went right in the harbor of Cherbourg Mm -hmm. to draw fire and find out where the, these gun, gun mounts were. Because sure. in, in that harbor, there was kind of a miniature uh, look, a bore, um, rock like a rock of, um, in a Mediterranean, what mm -hmm. is it? Gibraltar? Gibraltar, yeah. 
and uh, it, they had all kinds of guns in there, and they could farm to see, or they could oh, farm in there. Sure. Oh boy! So when we left there, why uh, we uh, every ship got hit, hmm. and we thought we wasn't hit until we <laughs> we were going back back across Channel. But anyway, um, <laughs> what happened? There was a shell, and it was about yay long and about like that. It was a big shell. Hit the water and ricocheted. It was a dud. And went into the bow of the ship up in the chain locker. Wow. And how come to find out? I was acting in the engine, back in the after engine room, and I had just happened to look up, and I saw the meter on the degaussing, you know, what the mm -hmm. degaussing on the ship. Sure. Zero. You know, it's putting that in there. <laughs> oh, gee. And I called the chief engineer, and I said, we don't have any degaussing. And they started looking for it, you know, all the way around. Mm -hmm. And this fellow, uh, uh, he was a electrician. He went down and just went into the chain locker and stuck his head out there. And there's, and there's that great big projectile right there. And <laughs> he come flying out of there. And the only way he could get it out, you know, was to get a hold of it and carry it <laughs> up the top side and throw it over the side because you couldn't poke it back out the hole. No. Because, you know, when it went through, it just opened up and then it closed right back. Sure. <laughs> So that's the only hit we got there. Well, you are so lucky. That could have blown you the kingdom come right yeah. there, couldn't yeah, it? Sure oh would. my goodness. Yeah. That sounds like, was, uh, it was from one of those big shore batteries? Yeah, it was one of the big shore 105 batteries. 105 millimeter or something yeah. like that. But evidently, it, the way it hit went, it hit, must have hit the water and ricocheted and went oh, up like that, see? Oh, for heaven's sake. Yeah. Goodness sakes. Well, uh, did you have, um, did you have injuries aboard ship at that time? No. Nobody got hit? No. Uh -uh. Well, that was lucky. Yeah. Lucky. No, we, uh, we, uh, actually, we, we were, uh, on one night, uh, now the Germans had E-boats and we had PT boats. Mm -hmm. Well, this one night, uh, it was the blackest night you ever saw, they, here was these E-boats coming in along the shore over there and we knew they picked them up on radar. And we took off and 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 was chasing them over the radar. Sure. And there was a flash back there, and we think maybe we got one of them. But uh, but they was going, they was leaving town. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and they were fast and powerful. Oh yeah, too. oh yeah, sure was. Well, they, I know those uh, e boats really. For a while, they had the control of the channel. Yeah, but uh, after after the sixth of June forty four, they yeah they were they were waning. Well, uh, and speaking about England, did you have any time ashore in England? One time. One time. Tell yeah. us about that. Well, I just went ashore and, and went into a pub and <laughs> got in a fight and come back. <laughs> <laughs> That was uh, not uncommon in the no. Navy. <laughs> but anyway, there was a pub, uh, uh, it was a narrow building, and half a corner not been knocked off of it. This is in Plymouth? Yeah, it's either Plymouth or Wayman. I, uh, I don't, Plymouth or I, I don't remember yeah. which one. Right. And the, the narrow, and they had like a little ice cream tables, you know, little, mm -hmm. little ones with broad arms. Oh, things. sure, that. Yeah, yeah. about four things around it, you know, and uh, <laughs> and you get your beer, you you buy, you get your glass, which is a pint, you know, a great big one like that, right. and then you get your beer, warm, of course, no no ice, right. And then you drink your beer, and you couldn't take that and go back up there. You had to turn it in, and get another one. Oh, see, yeah. and it's only from like uh, four to maybe. Four Four to five, if that if it's that much, mm -hmm. the ration, ration. See, oh, I see. And then they had a guy in the group that liked to fight. And, sure. And and it didn't take him much to <laughs> get a little out of control. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he says, "Let's bring this place out." Well, he might well agree with him. He's going to do it anyway. See. So anyway, he raised up, and uh, this this English sailor was coming with a one of those beer things like that. He raised him, hit him, didn't hit him solid, and he spun him around and lost his beer, and he hit on his hands and knees, and that door was right there, and he kept right on going. <laughs> I'm out of here, huh? I'm out of here. <laughs> Somebody come yelling in, the Bobbies are coming, the Bobbies coming, and all of us got out and were across the street from there and was looking, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> All of a sudden, you're onlookers. Yeah, they we're onlookers. <laughs> oh, you guys. Well, we, we did a lot of things. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah but, uh, that was, well, that was, um, and, and the preparation for uh, your being in the, in the landing uh, uh, armada there, um, uh, did they give you much information of what you were going to do or where no. you were going to be? No. No? Nothing. See, the, the reason they wouldn't bring them, they, all the troops that was loaded up, see, when that company yep. started, they wouldn't bring them back because they, undoubtedly they were sympathizers. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it could be, had to be careful. it could be your shipmate. Sure, sure. Security had to be uh, yeah. very, very, very secure. Mm -hmm. Very secure. Well, now being over there and in those waters for ten or eleven days, that 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 was a long time. Of course, over that period of time, you saw you saw changes on the land. Oh yeah. Like the Germans pulling back. And well, we 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 bombarded our uh, five inch thirty eights would reach. 12 miles, but they was accurate to nine. Right. And when we got back to that that far, they were that far inland. Uh, we we really couldn't help anybody then. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so that's when we went back to Weymouth and Plymouth and kind of hung around a little bit, and then nice. went back to Cherbourg. Yeah. And then after that, we there was five destroyers going back to the states, including the Laffey, and we were running with the Queen Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. 25 knots, I mean, she was... Zoom. Yeah, and we had a storm in the Atlantic out there, and so we had to drop down to 15 knots, see? Mm -hmm. This is Queen Elizabeth, the last time we saw her, she was going over the horizon, see? Oh, yeah. Just kept on going. And what, what was the top speed of your ship? Well, uh, I'm kind of jumping my way, but I'll tell you, uh, we in the Philippines on New Year's Day in 1945. Uh, there was a, a group of, of the Armada, if you will, Japanese mm -hmm. Armada, was coming back to take Mindoro Island. Oh yeah, big island. And yeah. so uh, we got word of it, and we were, uh, we were over, over on uh, at Tacloban on the mm -hmm. beach. And so about four o'clock in the afternoon, my uh, here come the MPs and SPs and red alert, get back to your ships, get back to your ships. Well, we got back to our ships, but the Laffey had been uh, acting as an oiler that day. Uh, they'd go over to the, or the tanker and they'd load up, go to Louisville, the cruiser Louisville, and pop oh. up on the Louisville and then oh. go back in another one. Oh, I see. Well, when, the, when this alert came in, we didn't have any oil. Well, everybody else had oil, and they went. Mm -hmm. And we, that night, that evening and the night, I was on a throttle all night, and we're turning the screws uh, uh, from 375 to 395 RPMs, mm -hmm. and the max was 400. And I, I don't know how many knots we were uh, making, but it was better than 31 or 35. It was up to 35 something. Boy. That's, uh, it's just amazing those ships could go that fast, yeah. you know. And it was just a great big phosphorus, phosphorus uh, stream all the way back. They didn't have to look for us because they could see us, that big <laughs> phosphorus trail right. back into the... Right. Now, did you uh, have to, uh, have to uh, maintain a zigzag course or...? We're running straight, I think. You were running straight. I think we were running straight. Wow. Well, I know I know the queens, uh, the Queen Mary, she she always went straight. Straight, I yeah, that's what she was. She was so high speed. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. big ship with. Yeah, she did. Ten thousand troops aboard. Oh my yeah. gosh. Well, now, how long did it take you to get back uh, to the states? Uh, four and a half days, I believe. Four and a half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it was right at right at five. Yeah. Four and a half to five, something like. And that, that was in heavy seas too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gosh. What was it like aboard ship in heavy seas? Uh, like eat, trying to eat a meal or go to the head or what? <laughs> well, it's kind of tough sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you had to hang on to things, didn't you? Oh, yes, you sure did. <laughs> uh, I saw this and, I, I, in fact, I told a man, the, the fellow I was talking to, I, I said, 
do you realize that you was leaving your bunk? He said, you've got to be kidding me. There's no way I'll be in my bunk. But he didn't believe me. And about three or four days later, he, he had a, I had a bunk here and he had one here. We were on the same level, see. Mm -hmm. About three or four days later, while we, I was in a pretty heavy season, he said, guess what? I said, you was leaving that too, about that far. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> it's sound sleep. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, people don't realize uh, what life aboard uh, a ship of that size uh, was, was like. It, yeah. it, it was very, very, very difficult. We rode out a typhoon over there to the estimated 70-foot uh, uh, waves. Right. Just imagine. And uh, That's like a mountainside. Oh, know? yeah, it was. Well, and it was like a ride in a car. You're coaster. looking down into that depth yeah. and everything. We clear up the bridge. Wow. I mean, the water, we wanted to dive into that, we clear up the bridge. Wow. Uh, the, uh, uh, anyway, there was bulkheads, um, footprints on the bulkhead. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, I can believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Bulkhead is a wall for people yeah. who don't know yeah. the term. Um, the, uh, what was the complement of the ship? How many? 336 officers and men. 336 officers and men. And what was the, do you remember what the length of the ship? Uh, 376 and a half feet. Okay, wow. And slim and narrow yeah. and oh my. 47 foot beam. 47 feet and 370 feet. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Well, boy, she could sure slice the, wall, the oh, water yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah, they were beautiful ships. Yeah. I, I can remember having seen, I never served on one, but I can yeah. remember seeing them at sea. You know, you, you can almost say that the, the ship was planning when we was at that, especially that night. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my golly, yes. And that thing weighed 3,100 tons. Uh -huh. Loaded and all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I was in the engine room, and I was, in this particular night, uh, we had uh, our reduction units for our uh, uh, turbines and all was rated at 50,000 50, horsepower. Hmm. Say so yeah, 50,000 horsepower. That's a lot of power. And we, by kind of ballpark uh, state, you know, for where we was at, mm -hmm. how much we was turning and all that, uh, we estimated we was doing 68,000 horsepower. Oh my Two goodness. of them, one forward and one aft. Wow. Now your duties as a fireman, uh, what, what did that comprise? Well, the, as a fireman, I was a boiler, I operated the boiler. Okay. And uh, as a machinist mate, I was, uh, I had different things I did, mm -hmm. uh, principally uh, uh, on the throttle. Okay. See? Right, right. So you were, <laughs> you were, you were, uh, you had a very, very distinct and very important duty. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, it was. How many firemen or how many machinist mates were there? I don't remember just how many they were. Ten or twelve. Or oh, something. there was uh, there was probably that much in each engine room. Okay. So another twenty-five or so, right, or right. maybe thirty. Right. You know, because you had to, you had uh, have to have a crew every four hours. You know, right? four on and four off. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. So that's why. And you were down there in the heat too. You know what? It, uh, it, it got to the point you didn't you you you, you, could, you could deal with that. Sure. It didn't it didn't, it didn't hurt right. you that bad. Yeah, but anybody you know anybody who had topside duty with <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that was uh, that was that was that was pretty difficult yeah. to think about. Okay, so you got back. Uh, where where did you pull in in the states? Back to Boston or yeah, Boston. Okay, uh, all right. I'm gonna tell you a little story about Boston. Good. When I was in the hospital. They gave me a 10-day leave. Well, I had 50 cents probably, you know, <laughs> or maybe not that, I don't know. <laughs> and so I go to Red Cross to borrow enough money to get home on, see, sure. 10-day leave. So I borrowed $34, that was a round trip ticket for on a train over to South Portsmouth, Kentucky. And uh, so uh, went back, I was on crutches, walking on crutches. Went back and then, of course, they 
took the cast off and I went back to ship. Mm -hmm. Well, in the meantime, they had transferred my records. You know how that. Oh did. boy. Yeah. And it, I don't know where they went to, but I guess they went to the hospital. I don't know. Well, uh, I got back on the ship, and very short, shortly after that, we went down to Brooklyn and picked up our uh, cargo ships and headed for England. See, well, I mean, we were in England, and I got a letter from the Red Cross when I was going to pay that pay that loan. Well, I wrote a note back that I hadn't been paid and didn't have any records, so I couldn't get paid. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then they, it didn't, I don't think I got another letter. And then when we got back to Boston, we had a phone on the quarter deck and Red Cross found out the life he was back in the, so they <laughs> called the skipper. <laughs> and they, he, uh, the skipper called me up to his cabin, you know, and says, why haven't you paid that loan? I said, well, Captain, I don't have any records and I haven't been paid. <laughs> <laughs> And he he kind of it told that Captain uh, uh, Beckton was he was a good one too I'll tell you, and he kind of got a little grin. He said, "I'll take care of that." <laughs> Never heard no more. Oh. But the only thing is, since I got paid, I sent them the thirty-four dollars. Well, of course, <laughs> yeah. Of course. But uh, but that was uh, <laughs> oh gosh. And he he uh, I at later on uh, when he was after he retired a rear admiral and. Uh, at a reunion, so a couple of times I asked him if he remembered that. Oh, yes. He said, I took care of that one, didn't I? Because <laughs> <laughs> I got an idea of what he said, but. Uh, right, right. Well, you were lucky you had a good, uh, you had a good man yes. a, as your leader there. That, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, there were many stories about yeah. uh, officers that just uh, were, were not, not, yeah. not oh, yeah. good people, you know. We had an XO, it was a real, real. Sorry yeah. thing. All right, now, now we got to get around to the Pacific. Oh yeah, yeah. So you came down, down the coast, across yeah. the Caribbean, through the canal. Yep. That must have been a wonderful trip too. Yeah, it was. And uh, you know, uh, when we went through the canal, we stopped in Balboa, which is on the Pacific side. Yeah. And everybody's going ashore, and half of them come back with a big tattoo or something. Oh boy. You know how that is. And there's a friend of mine that from Portsmouth, Ohio, and I, I was born and raised right across from Portsmouth, and he, we was neighbors really about to. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're good buddies. And he says, when we get in Honolulu, we get a tattoo. I said, all right. He said, if either one of us backs up, we we'll pay the other $20. Well, 1943, that was a, That's a lot of <laughs> 44, 43. All right. You know, Big you're money, only see. getting 45 or 50 dollars a Yeah. Month. So when we got to Honolulu, I got a little little tattoo up here. Uh-huh. Just a little one. Didn't put a name in or anything. Just just so I had a tattoo. Three, bu three bucks. <laughs> <laughs> what did your mother think of that? Well, <laughs> she didn't say anything. <laughs> but anyway, when we got to Honolulu, we got a tattoo. And then uh, he, had, he had one put on his arm and he was going with a girl, Marie, and he was <laughs> Really hot to drop for that. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, <laughs> at the first mail drop we got when we got going west, I dear John letter, you know. <laughs> oh, gee. So he's got Marie on his arm. Marie says bye bye. Huh? Yeah, she did. <laughs> so, anyway, we go through the uh, all of the uh, Annie Weta and all of that up there, and go down through there, and went to Guam and. Saipan, Tinian, right, in the Philippines. Went then went to the Philippines, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we didn't get to, there as invasion day. We was there. I don't know how many days, but it was pretty close to the mm -hmm. initial thing, and we participated in a, quite a few different things going on in there. Right. Um, one of the things is when uh, uh, Admiral, uh, when the Jap when Japanese were. Uh, Decoying. Oh yeah, Admiral Halsey. Halsey, yeah. Bull Halsey. And we was on that group that went charging up there. See. Oh, you were with Halsey up there. Yeah. To get those car those empty carriers. Yeah, but the only thing is, he turned around and came back. See. Yeah. yeah. Well, we we were Alpha de Alpha Alpha Torpedo Run, which is first one in. Oh my goodness! <laughs> see. 
How about that? And I wasn't too happy about that. No, I would say not. No. You, you yes. were breaking the ice, yes, so to speak. Absolutely, yeah. That, oh, my goodness. And the word got around to us, you know, that we, that's what it was. That's the way the plan was, that we were alpha. How about that? Yeah. So. Well, now, in, in, in that, in that, uh, in that sea battle, um, now that, that was only several hours that you were right. up there. Mm -hmm. And then you, you turned around and came back. Yeah, we, never, we never saw anything. We never got connected with anything. Oh, like I see. Oh, see, I see. So you came back with Halsey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course he came back. See, I was in that. Yeah. I, I, was, I was off Samar. Yeah. And uh, that's where we got uh, almost sunk. And, uh, but we knew, we knew at that time that Halsey had got sucked away. Yeah. And we were all very, very, uh, very, yeah. very questioning about him. Yeah. Um, and of course, a lot of books have been written about that. But yeah. uh, um, so then you came back, and then uh, af after that, uh, that was the 25th of October, 44. Yeah. Uh, when uh, did you hang around the Philippines? Oh, yeah. We were in the Philippines. Uh, that's well, when you were off of Mindoro and so oh, forth. Right. Uh, we, we, was, uh, we left the Philippines uh, as January something. 45. Uh, yeah, we went to, uh, we went to um, up to uh, Tokyo, you know, Japan, and bombed mm -hmm. the carrier group. Oh, yeah. Task Force 58. Oh, sure. Fast, fast carrier task force. Yeah. We went up 58 for oh. about... Uh, Oh, I don't remember how many weeks. It was a week or so, a week and a half, I guess. That must and then have came back and did uh, Iwo Jima. Yeah. And that must have been pretty exciting. Oh stuff. yeah, it was. It was. You saw the boys going in the shore. Oh and, yeah. And I'll Iwo. tell you. I'll tell you what. That was that was a, that was the awfulest thing I ever saw in my oh, life. That was terrible. Uh, terrible. Yeah. Uh, because they were they were laying flat on that going. Yeah. Here's, it, here's this. Sheer, sheer cut off like that, and, and the tank standing up there on the end. And that volcanic sand and yeah. everything, they couldn't hardly move. Yeah. And uh, it was terrible. Yeah, and then, then we went back up to Tokyo again. Yeah. Then went from, uh, and then came back and did Okinawa. In Okinawa in April of 45. Yeah. We were there, I think, seven days before the invasion. Oh, you were? Yeah. So you were in on the softening up process. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. We were. Yeah. I see. I and see. Then we uh, they made the landing and they walked on. Mm -hmm. They thought things were going to be easy, but it sure. wasn't, wasn't so good. Oh. And then uh, the 16th. Well, actually, the day that Roosevelt died, we went the next day after that. We went, we went to radar picket station number one. Mm -hmm. And so the first day we was out there it was pretty calm. I don't. I think we shot down a plane or two. I don't remember now. We had some action, but I don't remember just what it was. Then April the 16th, 1945, at eight o'clock in the morning, I was standing in the in the chow line, waiting to go to chow. And I was leaning on the. I was the last one in line. I'm leaning on the rail, you know, looking over the side and. We dumped garbage that morning. We're not moving. We're just kind of mm -hmm. in the bed springs going to see. Right. Well, I was watching the sharks. Mm -hmm. You know how you dump garbage. Sure. The sharks say, and that was some of them boogers that looked like me, like it was ten feet long or something. <laughs> Great big ones. I know they were big ones. And uh, <clears throat> so I'm thinking, boy, they'd be down swimming around with those characters, you know. And just about the time I was heading down to. Going up from the deck down to the mess hall to get yep. the towel, General Porter's. Oh my! So, and the history says that everybody got fed, but it, that didn't happen. It was, a, it was about 25 of us didn't get getting breakfast that night. You went to battle station without with an empty stomach. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. for heaven's sake! Well, now, <clears throat> was that the beginning of the kamikaze attacks? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And tell us about the first one that came in on you. Well, the first one came <clears throat> in at. Uh, it, it actually hit uh, uh, hit the water in cartwheel and the cartwheel, oh, yeah. and the wing went up over the mount. Oh, see, well, here's the the people in Mount, mount One Fifty Three, which is the one on the fantail. Mm -hmm. Talking and about they, the gun mount, right? 
and they uh, couldn't rotate, you know, couldn't do anything. Sure. So they came out of their mouth and got a hold of, out of the uh, mount rather, and, and got a hold of that thing and wrestled it around and threw it off to the side. Oh. Got back in their mouth and went back to work. <laughs> with so, did they see the did they see the pilot in the plane or anything? No, it was just a, it was a, like a wing. Oh, oh, it was a piece of the. Yeah, mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. Good heavens, well, that and, could have been a good souvenir. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it got back in there and and uh, uh, it uh, got hit again. Same day, three times. Wow. So, anyway, uh, the third time was uh, it got hit almost. Simultaneously mm -hmm. with uh, two kamikazes, they came in from different areas, mm -hmm. and of course there's uh, 14 men in there, and six of them survived. And so they uh, were those direct hits, the yeah. plane oh, coming yeah. in yeah. clear air right into the ship. Yeah. Oh, goodness. And so they blew them out of the mounts, and they're uh, they. Uh, they got, uh, well, actually, the, the gun captain, who was a Barry, uh, Larry uh, uh, Delusky, he was blown out. He, he survived. And then there was another fellow that was, his name was Gabhart. He was semi survived. Good. Another fellow named Adams, he was survived. And I can't remember the other ones. But anyway, they survived. Well, weren't they lucky, though? Well, they was a, you know, we had a segregated uh, uh, Navy. Oh, yeah. And there's yeah. a fellow that was a gunner's mate. You couldn't hardly tell that he was black, but he was. And so his name was, uh, well, no matter, I can't remember now. But he was a good friend of Tulewski's. They were, they were good friends. Mm -hmm. They was on the, in the same mount. Sure. Well, when he came to, because planes that hit them uh, and it was a five, had a 500 pound bombs on them and they was loud too and they kind of get your attention <laughs> and, and uh, so uh, when he came to why this uh, Jester Flint it was his name he was hanging out of the hatch down here you know down on the hatch mm -hmm. so he went over to help him out and you know would, took him in his arms and he died in his arms right there oh goodness yeah. sake so and then uh, there was another fellow who was blown out on the deck. I don't know how, most likely about the hot shell hole or something mm -hmm, you know, like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. Knocked him out. <laughs> he was he was 36 years old. He was he was an old man old to timer. us. Yeah. And when he came to, he raised up or trying to get up or something, and he felt something warm run down over him, and he knew that he had been hit. Mm -hmm. And there was another fellow there was fighting fire, had a guard fire hose, you know, he was fire, named Anderson. And so Gabby says, Andy, have I been hit? And Anderson said, yeah, Gabby, said if your blood is green, you've been hit. And what he was, it, when it blew him out there, it also blew out about five gallons of that green hydraulic oil on him. Oh. <laughs> it was running down over him and he thought it hit. Oh, for heaven's sake. So in, in all dire situations, there, yes. there is some humor sometimes. Yeah, I should say. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the circumstances of, of under which you lived and fought in that particular battle, um, and you said you were how many days on station there? Uh, before then, before we got hit at Algonac. No, well, yeah. when you started getting hit, uh, it took. Well, it, it actually lasted eighty minutes. Eighty minutes. Yeah, that's a long time. Right. That, that kind of stuff. You know, they had us, but uh, the they sent out the one the carrier sent out uh, six uh, uh, fighters or what? What mm -hmm. they called? Uh, I can't remember. Hellcats. Hellcats. That's yeah. right. And then they ran on ammunition, and uh, and they brought the Corsairs, uh, the Marine Corsairs, yep. out. Yeah. And uh, if it hadn't been for them, they would they had us. They would have. Yeah. But they yeah. they started knocking them down. But we'd been knocking them down up to that point. Yeah. So. Yeah. So they were knocking them out of the air before they got to the ship. 
Yeah, and the coarse hairs and the hair, hell cats. Right, and then and then it was getting them right over top of us, just sure. basically, basically. Good. And yeah. we was getting them too, you know. And and, and I've heard, uh, I, of course, I didn't directly see all of this, but uh, I heard people talk about it that they don't couldn't imagine those planes flying into that all the slacks, uh, the slack, uh, sure. and all and everything. Sure. Yeah. And still kept coming. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. yeah. You'd see pictures, or you'd look up at the sky, and it was just black puffs and, and the, the black yeah. specks yeah. and everything, and they were still coming through. Yeah. How many hits did the Laffy take from Kamikaze? Uh, five planes hit us, and three of them dropped bombs on us. Five planes. Five planes hit you, and dro three drop bombs on them. And three drop bombs. Yeah, it killed and wounded a third of our crew. Good heavens! Oh my. God. Thirty-six killed, and the rest of them were wounded. Oh 70, my. Seventy, seventy-one, or seventy-three. And there you were below decks. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, uh, I was in the fire room. I do, my duty station was in the engine room, and my GQ station was in the fire room. Mm -hmm. um, actually, we were too busy thinking about something, but I had a feeling that I'm going to be all right. I, I don't know why, how I can explain mm -hmm. that, but I knew that I was going to be all right. The Lord was with you. Yeah. And so, uh, and I was. And I did things uh, <laughs> like, for example, there was a, a, I was on one boiler and another boiler was on the other one right behind me and seeing, and he was froze. I mean, he could, he was, we needed steam and yeah. he wasn't doing it. He couldn't do it. Yeah, he just couldn't do it. And he was an Italian fellow and kind of uh, excited. Emotional. <laughs> yeah. And this first class water tender said, kick it, so and so. I did. I kicked him hard, uh -huh. and he never, he never, he never froze up again. But he couldn't speak English, and he was calling me everything. But <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> I hope he didn't get the purple heart for you. You're no, kicking him. No, <laughs> no, I don't think he did. Oh my goodness! Well, that uh, <laughs> the the emotions though that you must have felt, uh, not only that you were uh, uh, you were going to make it, but also, what was going on outside there that you? I knew, uh, actually, every one of them were the hit, and the only thing I could think about was my friends. Yes, my, of course. Uh, yeah, fellows topside and everything right. that were. And who got hurt? The gunners. That's the only thing that was going through my mind. Gunners and the bosuns and the. Oh right, boy. and other people that were good friends oh, too. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you one, the something that happened, and okay. I've always, I was re always remembered it. We had a fellow on the ship that. His name was Ray Hallis, and Ray was a, a most pleasant little fellow. He was young, kind of small. Never, never actually got into any argument with mm -hmm. anybody or anything like that. And even tempered guy. Right. He was. He was just good man to be around. Sure. And so he followed me on watch, and I went down to. About, this was about two weeks before we got hit. Uh, I went down to wake uh, the watch, and and normally I'd just say, Ray, it's time to go, and he'd say, okay, and get up and go, see. And I touched him this time, and he came out of that bunk, he was on the center bunk, he <laughs> came out of that bunk just fighting, I mean, he was wild. Wow. Well, I ducked him and got away from him, and, and I was totally shocked because that was out of character. I mean, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine him doing that. See, <laughs> well, he stood there a minute and had his hand back on his bunk, you know, and he says, uh, "I would like to take a shower before I come down." And I said, "Sure, go ahead." So I went back to come down to the engine mm -hmm. room, and I was, so he came down and he thought he had to tell me what, <clears throat> what was happening. And he was, he had, he was married and had a son. And he was dreaming that he was fighting the devil who was trying to take his son away from him. Oh my goodness. And when I touched him, he said, evidently, he felt like he got an electric shock. Yeah, right. See? Oh well, uh, that bothered me, and I, but you know, uh, the first real hit we got, he was one, one, of the, one of the perished. 
Oh, well, two, about two weeks. Oh, yeah, my time. goodness yeah. sakes. Well, James Spriggs, you have had some yeah. incredible experiences, and we just yeah. we're so thankful that you're here, and not only for you and your family, but yeah. but for our great nation. And uh, you survived. And you're a hero. Yeah. You you experienced uh, terrible times against the enemy, and uh, <clears throat> we're so happy that we had the honor of uh, interviewing you and getting you on tape and. And uh, God bless you, and uh, yes. we'll, we've, thank, we've thank come to the end of the line. Here. Yes. Thanks again for everything. Thank you. Okay.